Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and we are back to grinding in Pokemon Nuzlocke, which is daily. And we need to grind, otherwise our entire team dies to the Elite Four. Uh, the highest it goes is 50, which is going to be a real problem. 15 level difference. I don't mind if it's 10. I can deal with 10. I can fuck with 10. Can't fuck with 15. It's too much. I'll be dealing too little damage. Supersonic. Ugh. Golbat, why do you continue to exist? Your entire presence in in my general vicinity is an enigma. You're Schrodinger's cat if Schrodinger did not give a shit about the cat, so we just he just kill the cat and put it in a box. That's what you are to me, Golbat. You're nothing. Alright, next. I'm wondering, because Raider Sand did mention it, maybe I should go and get Lugia. It would kind of help, for sure. The thing is, is that, uh... I don't know if I want to use a Legendary to help beat the Pokemon League. I don't think we need it. I think the only thing we need them for is, um... Is, uh... Lance. Every other person would be like, well, we don't really need you, so we're not going to use you. But I don't know. Something to think about, for sure. Oh, Kit Vista, you learning Earthquake is the most beautiful thing in the world. Earthquake is such a good move. Earthquake is such a good move that it was as it's as good as I when I used it as a child. Earthquake has never stopped being good. Oh, hello, Rayhorn. I don't know, I, don't, I just don't wanna... Like, if I had run into one of the legendary dogs, I would try to catch it. And I would use it. Yeah, a Suicune, actually. If I could find a Suicune somehow... Um... I would use it. But... Because I have to go looking for... Uh... Because I have to go looking for Lugia, I just don't know. Bye, horn. There's a, there is also the distinct possibility that I lose a Pokemon trying to catch Mr. Lugia, which is 100% possible. Even though I think I would just toss the Master Ball at him. Yeah, that would work out a whole bunch. Hello, Donphan. Come on. Hypnosis. I should check to see how much Headbutt hurts Donphan. See if he has more special attack, um, defense or regular defense. And I believe I have stab on confusion as well. Alright, it's confusion. Confusion is the way to go. I should know better than to try and headbutt an elephant to death. Get him, Nightmare. Get his ass. But he doesn't, have you ever seen... So I don't know anything about um, basketball other than you need to shoot shoot, uh, shoot the hoop. And if you hit the backboard, it's an easy way to get shots in. Uh, but other than that, um, I don't know anything about modern basketball players. So there was a guy I think called LeVar Ball? Or maybe it was his dad? I honestly don't remember and I honestly don't care. But what I do remember is that they were on an episode of WWE Raw... And, uh, it was really weird, because so the, the, the basketball player, which is a young kid, um, his dad took off his shirt to go fight the Miss, and he was, like, getting ready, like, oh, I'm gonna beat you, I'm gonna beat you. And then his son said, yo, beat that, and then he said the N-word. <laughs> uh, and he said it live on air. It is really funny, because after he says it, Dean Ambrose comes out, and then Dean Ambrose comes out, and he's like... Did he just say the N-word? But he's like mouthing it like, Did he just say that? <laughs> this is the funniest thing. Oh, uh, it was a train wreck. And it was trash TV. But it was funny trash TV. That's how um, um, all kinds of wrestling... Honestly, I would prefer it when wrestling cameos were people acting a fool... And not winning championships as opposed to what it is now, which is like every time a celebrity comes in, 
they gotta beat someone who's been working their ass off for the company all the time, is underappreciated, is at Union, and then he comes to work for WWE, um, some celebrity comes in and just, like, beats him, like, Gronk, Gronk shows up and he just beats a bunch of wrestlers he doesn't deserve to beat, because he's a guy named Gronk and he was a football man, and WWE only knows how to bet on people who are famous from not being in wrestling. It's very sad. Very depressing. Um, but I preferred the old style where uh, they just came in. And... Except for Kevin Federline. Did you know that, that not a lot of people beat John Cena during his big time? Uh, I think it was one specific year. I think he only lost seven times. And of those seven times, he one of the losses was to Kevin Federline, the then husband of Britney Spears. Which is the weirdest thing to have on your record of losses. It's like, oh yeah, John Cena. Everyone who ever beat him was a tough, a t- tough up-and-comer. Or was being heavily v- pushed by the company in some way. And then there's also Kevin Federline. Who I guess was fighting John Cena in terms of white rapperness. Which is crazy. I remember seeing that episode live too. I remember when Kevin Federline won. I was extremely angry. <laughs> uh, not just because I don't like Kevin Federline, because uh, I don't like Kevin Federline either, but it was more like just the audacity of it to be like. And to be fair, he lost in a way that made sense. Like someone hit John Cena in the back with a chair, and they beat him up, and then they just dragged Kevin Federline's lifeless body because he got his ass kicked by John Cena, and gave him the pin one, two, three. But basically, after that, I feel like. After John Cena did the job to Kevin Federline, it opened the gate for a bunch of other celebrities to be able to come in and just kind of whip ass of any wrestler. I will say the one that kind of does deserve it, though, um, in terms of celebrities that kick uh, kick some who won, even though I feel like they didn't, um, even though I feel like no celebrity deserves to ever win against a wrestler. Um was Stephen Amell, the guy who plays Green Arrow. Or at least I think he did. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, But he played... He's most famous for being the Green Arrow. Um, He showed up... He's friends with Cody Rhodes, I believe. Cody... Because he's friends, was like, I'll lose to you and I'll be Stardust. And it'll be cool. And honestly, it was, because I thought Stephen Amell was actually very good in the ring. Uh, I feel I believe he trains himself um, all the time, like for for Arrow, um, and he has a very much a deep love for wrestling. It's actually very similar to David Arquette. Um, David Arquette, if you did not know this, used to be a was a former WCW champion uh, because while um, WCW I guess was dying, they let. Um, one of the many very questionable championships uh, champions that they had near the end of their their live stream was uh, one was Kevin Russo I believe something Russo not Kevin Russo because I might be getting confused with Kevin Owens I'm combining him with uh, Russo Vince Russo Vince Russo um, who was a story writer is the story writer for uh, who was the story writer for the Attitude Era that got um, WWE Raw very popular in terms of its uh, storytelling. He's basically synonymous with Attitude Era. And it's really funny because if you... <laughs> I think in Beyond uh, Dark Side of the Ring, he reveals like his, fro- his thought process for it, which was, he's like, I woke up every day and I watched Jerry Springer. And I said, how can we do this for our guys? And that's how he made the Attitude Era. Is that a man just really watched a whole buttload of Jerry Springer. And it was like, okay. Sure. Uh, to be fair, the best parts of the Attitude Era, I feel like, are when he was pushed back. But also the character work was made by the wrestlers themselves. Like, Steve Austin is Steve Austin. And no Russo helped him with that. At all. I feel. Maybe he feels differently. I don't know. Ask Stone Cold. When I get the chance, I'll ask Stone Cold Steve Austin. God, if I can meet Stone Cold Steve Austin. People say, don't meet your heroes. And I say, 
but I want to meet all the wrestlers <laughs> before they all perish on me. You know how much I would give if, as a kid, I met Eddie Guerrero or something? I might actually, you know, to be real talk, if I ever met a wrestler in real life, I probably would have ended up being a wrestler. Maybe I should actually just give up everything and be a wrestler. Get no union. I was about to say, I won't be a part of a union, but I'm not a part of a union now. So if I'm going to kill myself, why not, uh, kill myself working, I should say. If I'm going to kill myself working, then why not for the WWE and for the entertainment of thousands of people as opposed to what I'm doing now, which is just to satiate some corporation. Multiple corporations, actually. Uh, hmm. Something to think about, for sure. Oh, thank you. Heal my Pokemon, please. By heal my Pokemon, I mean heal Nightmare, who is my only Pokemon. I appreciate it. Thanks, baby. Goodbye. Okay, let's go back. Oh, Nightmare, you're almost there. I can feel it. I think I'm gonna get him the 40. I'm gonna I'm gonna declare 40 as the sweet spot for every Pokemon. And then we'll get Nux a little bit of training. And then when Nux finishes training, we'll go fight the Elite Four. Ooh. Even now thinking about it, I'm like, oh god. How's that gonna work out? I don't know. I mean, if there's a full-on team party wipe, I don't know. That's gonna be bad for business, I can tell you that right now. The most... Man, what if someone dies while I'm fighting the Elite Four? Ugh, that'd be bad too. Oh, especially because they're gonna have to be healed and their, and their bodies are gonna have to be put into the Pokemon League. So they'll be remembered, but then I'll have to release them immediately afterwards. Hello, Don Fan. So we meet again. Allow me to kill you, Mr. Bond. I've never seen many James Bond movies. I actually, if I'm being 100% real with you right now, I think I've only actually seen the new James Bond movies. Uh, I remember playing the old, like, um, 007 game on the N64. But I don't remember watching that movie. Ever. Uh, I've never seen any of the Connery stuff. Um, I've seen a lot of parodies of James Bond. I've seen Austin Powers. Which Austin Powers is like James Bond, but British. Oh, wait. <laughs> I was supposed to say, wait. They, he is British. It's But but it's, um... I don't know. I've seen enough clips from it. I know at one point, James Bond fights a voodoo doctor, I believe. Which I thought was always weird. and then, Because how can a spy fight a voodoo witch doctor? Feels like mismatched powers, to be honest. Um, but I guess that was during the crazy time where nobody knew anything. People were making movies and they were just like, You know what would be really cool? What if James Bond fought a voodoo witch doctor? Could you imagine a modern day James Bond? Where James Bond fought a voodoo witch doctor. I actually think it'd be better than the last couple James Bond movies. <laughs> At least in concept alone, I'd be like, I'm down. Where can I get buy a ticket to this right now? And the answer is your phone. And I'd be like, cool. Let me get to my AMC Stubbs Award. Where I can experience all the movies. And have all the awesome time. And experience such wide benefits from A+. I don't have AMC Plus anymore. It took forever to cancel it, for sure. <laughs> it was such a pain in the butt. It was really cool while I had it, but... Eventually, my sister started working on the day. In the daytime, as opposed to nighttime with me. So we couldn't go to as many movies. And I can't blame her for going to a job that pays her more. It's the same job, it's just in the daytime now. <laughs> uh, she does different stuff, of course. But it's like, damn, 
our special brother, sister, and brother because our brother Nuxo so she came with us. Uh, bonding time is done, man. And I miss it. I love hanging out with my siblings. I mean, they love hanging out with me too, but... I don't know. I'm actually very sad now. It was so cool watching stuff together. I mean, we, we watch stuff now. It's not like I'm saying like, oh, we're not together anymore. We're still in the same living situation, so it's not like much has changed, to be honest. Um, the only thing that's changed is we don't go to movies together. And we can't go to movies together anymore. <laughs> so, I don't know. Silly how that works out. I love hanging out with my brother and sister. They're cool people. Wish I could make more videos with them, but you know. Current situation and all that. Living situation that is not opposed to the current corona situation. Alright, we leveled up. And I think with that, it's time to end this episode, everyone. Thank you very much for watching the training of Nightmare. Nightmare's training is pretty soon to be closed. And then we'll start on Nux's training. And then from that point on... Nothing stops us from getting the Elite Four. We probably have to go all the way the hell down if we want to be, um... If we want to do Nux's training, if I'm being honest with you, because I don't know if he can fight... Actually, he could fight a bunch of Dawn fans and Gold Bats, now that I think about it. Let's see. We had Jolene. Let me give Jolene her item. It's gonna be funny that Jolene is a level 44 and she's gonna be the one that's not used. Miracle Seed. Yeah, we're getting close to it. Alright, everyone. Until next time. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!